So Joanna Luna was also on board for CFW this year. She celebrated her 10th year with Caribbean Fashion Week. And how she's grown. You know, you can see, um, she's always, you know, great, but you can see the development in her collection and how she's developed over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, it was, uh, well, it's always a pleasure to have a collection from Joanna Luna, but it was particularly so this year. Why, because it was all black? Well, no, but that, that was helped to make the collection what it was, but that wasn't the reason. It was just the overall quality of the collection. Yes. Um, I, I liked her shapes and, and her forms and, and um, the, the, the story she was telling with the collection. And so um, overall, I would say it, it, it was a very good. It was, yeah. it was, it was um, pretty special. Yeah, it was. She had a, a, a balance and a, a combination of flow and geometry because that piece, again, I keep coming back to Alicia mm -hmm. Burke, mm -hmm. that she wore with sort of the padded shoulders and just very angular. And she had some floaty numbers as well, you know. I think I remember Francine with one, with, with an elegant kind of a cape that was really stunning and flowing. And against the stark white runway being floated into the rainforest, mm -hmm. it was the even black, more spectacular. It, it was. And also, I found that a lot of her looks were reflecting a lot of the new trends um, that we're seeing now in, in, in fashion. Mm -hmm. And so she's right on point. Yeah, she is. And I mean, it's hard to sort of pick apart a collection that is all black mm. um, <laughs> but um, you know it's sort of like a standard in fashion you can't go wrong if you open a wardrobe with black items you can just grab and go and you will always be guaranteed to look elegant. Jenna Luna was also invited to Buckingham Palace this year as part of the Caribbean Commonwealth Exchange and I think she, that whole black collection came from that, in a sense, because I remember a mannequin with a, a nice black piece, and, and, and that whole exhibition at Buckingham Palace was curated by Hamish Bowles from Vogue. So that was a big deal. Absolutely. Kudos to Arlene yes. Martin and her continued success. And also Mailing um, actually was a part of that, too. I remember another Caribbean designer who will be featured later on on Caribbean Fashion Weekly. Because she remains, you know, this huge, force in Caribbean fashion. Yes. Um, and um, uh, Arlene's success at Buckingham Palace just reminds me of the royal connection that we have. Um, Who's we? Paul? Paul has a royal Pulse, connection? Yes, in, 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 in direct and, and, and indirect ways. Right. In Arlene's case, it's a lot very indirect because, right. of course, you know, she's a designer, but then she Came started out of Caribbean and fashion developed week. her career uh, to a great extent through Caribbean Fashion Week. Um, but I remember Parisa Fitzhenley, one of our models, who played Meghan Markle in that when Harry met um, Sally. Meghan. <laughs> no, not Sally. Meghan. When Harry met Meghan. Yeah, something like that. Right. This lifetime movie. Right. Right. And uh, Parisa was one of our early stars mm -hmm. as a model. Um, and um, also, of course, you can't forget the Peter Tosh Museum at Pulse. Right. And um, going, I mean, a long connection, right. but going back to the whole business of the legalization of marijuana, which is such a big thing these days. Um, and, you know, Peter promising to light his spliff in Buckingham Palace. Well, so. that's what I know. I just remember Peter wanting to light a big spliff in Buckingham Palace. Right. I'm just trying so to that, figure out the connection. Not, isn't that a part of the royal connection? Anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> Might seem a little tenuous. Yeah, we, but, we should take it back to fashion. I mean, I know okay. people. <laughs> it's okay. All I just remember is light up your spliff. Light up your chalice. Why would you take Actually, it back to fashion? No, 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 no. You know what? That's one of my favorite Peter Tosh songs. The music in that song is amazing. It's such an amazing song in and of itself, but it's a dance. It's an amazing dance song. It's a but, beautiful. But, but if, since we have started going down that road, and we right. can, you can always pull me back whenever you want. <laughs> I want to come out but, on the walking out valley, lighting but, up but the street. But remember now that <laughs> this whole the world has changed in right. terms of. Certainly medicinal marijuana in, in, in many parts of the world, right. all marijuana right. is now legal. Mm -hmm. But um, you have the Sensi Herb House that at is Pulse. opening, just opened at Pulse. Um, and so that's another thing, you know, so you can go and get your medi medical um, dispense, prescriptions dispensed, mm -hmm. um, medical marijuana. And you can also, it's also uh, you can also go and smoke your, your spliff. 
So you see, Peter. It's not only in Buckingham Palace that you want to light up the split. You, you would have <laughs> choices. You see, so the connection is even more than you think. Right. As tenuous as it might appear. Right. Right. Okay. Well, we know Parissa is bona fide, having played uh, Meghan Markle um, in the film, coming from Pulse, and Arlene is um, bona fide too with her designs at Buckingham Palace. But well, Peter Peter wanted bonafide. to I get remember, it. Remember, we actually produced Peter's last ever concert, right. Pulse did, right, right, and 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 set up and curate his museum, right. So so there's a strong connection. This experience of putting this museum together has taught me so much and made me deepen my understanding of the value of Tosh, which is absolutely immense on so many levels. And nobody can deny Peter his desire to light, to his light up his split in Buckingham, Buckingham Palace. Palace. Right, gotcha. So speaking of collections and Buckingham Palace and Joanna Luna and her 10-year black collection anniversary at CFW, let's take a look. Absolutely. It's God's beat maker. So what I did, because it's been 10 years since I first showed at Caribbean Fashion Week, and that's when I started, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. I was, yes. Sh so what I did was I just got inspiration from previous pieces, did a bit of some changes. I went all black for my first. I did all black again. So the inspiration really was the first collection. What I did was I pulled from pieces through each of the 10 years. So one piece, and just to highlight things that were favorites, and just did a twist on it. Some things were new, but really with elements of the previous ones. I didn't go with as much fullness this time, and also did some of my tailored looks in terms of just structured pants outfits, because I love making pants. The thing of it is I don't I hardly ever use collar and just to be true to myself for the 10 years I went with what I like working with most and it's black and I just like the cleanness of all black. Mm -hmm. 